So I did something a little different this past week. I asked you guys on Twitter what you wanted to hear me talk about in this week's forum. Unfortunately, I didn't get any suggestions that I thought I could make a whole 10 minute long video about, but to be fair to you guys who took the time and energy to actually respond to that query, I'm going to address them one by one, half of them in the intro, half of them in the outro, starting with the rumor mill surrounding the Nintendo Switch. I don't think it's really productive talking about rumors. I mean, unless you actually have a patent in front of you or a quote from a developer, like hard evidence that this is going to happen, the company just hasn't officially announced it yet, then it's not really worth talking about. Although I will say one thing, if that rumor about Pokemon Stars ends up being true, that's... I feel really bad about the people who have already spent money on Pokemon Sun and Moon because, guess what? Your purchase just got invalidated. Hooray! Uh, the second suggestion I got was Nintendo's NES Classic shortage. I mean, are we really surprised by that at this point? <laughs> I mean, Nintendo always does this. They have always done this. It happened with the Wii, it happened with the Wii U, it happened with Amiibo, it has just now happened with the NES Classic, and I guarantee you, I bet you dollars to donuts it's going to happen with the Switch. I will eat a bug in one of these intros or outros if it doesn't happen with the Switch, because I know from experience that Nintendo doesn't learn lessons. Well, I just finished dumping a truckload of nostalgia all over the internet, so to ensure balance in the universe, now I need to take myself down a peg. Your mileage is probably going to vary with this, but it's something I've noticed happen to me as time goes on, and it helps answer a question I've had for a while. Why do we get so mad at reviewers that don't agree with us? I mean, there has to be a logical reason comments like this exist other than they're all trolls, because considering how often it happens, they just can't be. And now that I've written reviews of my own for a few years, I'm starting to understand where they're coming from. Escapism is one of the cornerstones of video games. Lots of people play games for the sole purpose of leaving reality behind for a while, so when we find a virtual world we like, we tend to get invested in it. That's a great thing, a powerful thing, a thing I rarely get to experience anymore. Why? Because I've trained myself not to. From what I understand, people watch game reviews because they want to get a reasonable perspective on whether or not this world is a place they want to get lost in. I mean, video games are way more expensive than they probably should be in the first place, which forces most people without disposable income to pick and choose. I still maintain that a 100% objective review is impossible, but if I'm gonna call it a review, I have a responsibility to at least try, to hone the analytical side of my brain and be able to point out in the moment why something does or does not work. My video is useless as a buyer's guide without that element to it. And this is where the disconnect happens. I'm looking at the game as a game. Most people, however, are looking at their games as experiences. This is what I call the reviewer effect. See, escapism is a magic trick. We're all reasonable human beings, we know full well that these worlds aren't real. But for one reason or another, we want to believe the illusion. We want to be fooled into thinking that dragons exist, that the year is 20xx, and that war never changes. But once you start seeing hitboxes instead of characters, and variables instead of level-ups, the illusion comes undone. The magic doesn't work anymore. And that's a terrifying prospect for some people. The idea that a little bit of insight could completely undermine this thing you enjoy. And is that the customer's fault? No, not at all. Everybody plays games for different reasons, and we're all looking for very specific things based on our personal biases. And it's really easy to say, oh well, if one naysayer is enough to ruin your entire enjoyment of a game, I guess that says something by itself, but man, that happens to me. I mean, yes, half the reason I love Link's Awakening over the Oracle series so much is because of nostalgia, but the other half is because the Zelda formula is so much more pronounced in those games. And I know these videos are years old now, but after hearing digressing and sidequesting and sequelitis tackle that very subject, I simply can't unsee it. 
Yes, I do feel like I'm being dragged along by the nose instead of going on an adventure. Yes, the process to get from dungeon to dungeon does feel calculated and predictable. And yes, I do go into these kinds of games now feeling like I already know what's going to happen. And surely I'm not the only one, right? 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 But, don't think being a cynic is all doom and gloom. I mean, if it was, I would've quit years ago. But I'm willing to make some compromises in terms of that beloved immersion. Because challenging myself to analyze and pick apart what makes my favorite games tick can sometimes make me appreciate them more. This is why some games only get better with time, why you can go back to them years later and still have fun when your anticipation to play them is as room temperature as possible. It's why I still enjoy Banjo-Tooie, because now I'm old enough and clever enough to find all the shortcuts between worlds that make the dreaded backtracking people complain about almost disappear. It's why I like busting out Borderlands 2 every now and then, because even if I start up a new game, the ranking system will make sure none of my previous efforts go to waste. It is a timeless mechanic. And this process has even given me a new appreciation for how slick and satisfying the combat in Final Fantasy X is. I mean, don't get me wrong, I care about the characters as far as which enemies they're useful against, and the story about as far as going on this journey allows Yuna to do this, which makes this a whole lot easier. And do you see what I'm doing here? How that kind of self-awareness and insight allows us to have an actual conversation about these games? How we can learn, notice, and appreciate more fondly that which we actually understand? I mean, what would you rather have? That or, hey, why do you like Final Fantasy X? Bah, I don't know, Titus laughs funny. <laughs> so that's where we stand. Looking a little more closely at this medium may make it seem like you're throwing away something magical, but I tell you what, learning is a journey and not a destination. There will always be some developer more clever than the last out there that'll find a way to surprise me regardless. And thanks to what I've learned, I'll be able to properly thank them for it when the time comes. But if you're the kind of person who grinds away at an unpleasant job all day just to make ends meet, and has like two hours to work with when they get home before they have to go to bed, and just wants to play something without thinking about it too hard, that's fine. I would be out of line to hold that against you. But, you're gonna have to make me a promise. When you find a game you love, I understand that you feel compelled to share it with other people. And when you see one of your favorite YouTubers cover said game, it's natural to get a little excited. I mean, this is one more thing you can connect on them with, right? But if they end up not liking it, you have to promise me you won't get bent out of shape about it. That is, you promise not to watch my reviews because you're looking for someone to validate your opinion. That's not what they're for. You already bought the game, so the information within those videos isn't useful to you. If you don't want to engage in discussion, then please stay away from the places where you will obviously find it. Because I tell you what, if you like the game that much, methinks your time might be better spent playing it instead. Suggestion number three, the Persona 5 delay. <sighs> there are quite a few different angles to this one, aren't there? I mean... Let's be straight up about something. The game is already out in Japan. Like, this is the reason I didn't do another trailer analysis, because all of the answers are already out there. Okay, you want to find something out about this game, you can just go to the wiki and look it up. Um, so it seems a little strange that they have to delay it by a whole two months, but on the other hand, I know that there are a lot of logistics involved with sending, shipping a product on that scale to stores all the way across an entire country. Like, there's packaging, you gotta make the discs, you gotta make sure the code is correct, that everybody's got the right version of the game. There are a lot of different wires that have to be crossed just right to make something happen on that kind of scale. It's a lot more involved than you think. As for the reason behind it, they are right. A lot of people do ask for a Japanese voiceover option in JRPGs, and I'm on record saying that if you're going to bring a game to an English, primarily English-speaking territory, you should set the default to the English language, because, you know, most people are going to understand the game that way. But I think there's just this mental tick a lot of JRPG fans have these days. Like, they've just heard so many 
bad English voiceover jobs in games. None of them from Atlas, I should point out. They're always very good about that kind of thing, especially in Persona, that they just have this mental roadblock that they cannot enjoy a JRPG unless the cast is speaking in Japanese. And especially considering some of the stuff that's happening with video game voice actors right now, that's really unfair to some of the truly talented people out there. And as for the last suggestion I got, I really don't feel like talking about American politics on this channel, or on this show specifically, so... Yeah, there you go, guys. Thank you for giving me some extra little things to talk about.